the previous video in this series I went over how I was setting up the welding equipment for repairing this cast aluminium component. It's part of a reperforator. It's very old, it's um, very porous um, cast aluminium. So the method I'm using for this is to TIG welding and I demonstrated the general uh, method I'm using uh, in the previous video. Uh, I can't really show the welding of this in this video because it's very difficult to weld uh, with the camera in the way I need to get to uh, both sides of the part while I'm trying to weld. Um, but I will go over the individual steps. Now the first step, I would say here, you don't need to weld this. There are probably other methods that you could uh, use, but um, in my opinion, welding is the best way of repairing this. Uh, so the first step in repairing this is to bead blast it. It will need repainting after it's been welded anyway. The paint's also in fairly bad uh, condition. So I'm going to bead blast both parts of this, completely remove all the paint. Uh, that will also let me see any of the damage that it might have. And uh, will also, of course, clean it up uh, to a certain extent so that uh, I can weld it more easily. So that's the first step. I'll get this into the bead blast cabinet and uh, get back on camera once this has been bead blasted. So after bead blasting, the parts have come up nice and clean. I can't actually see any of the damage on them anywhere, so that's uh, good news, just the single break. And um, what we can do now is prepare them for welding. So luckily, again, there are no bits missing, so it was a fairly clean break, no chunks have broken away and disappeared. And um, what we need to do now is find some way to hold this together so it's in the right position when we weld it. And the easiest way to do this is to use the actual chassis. So if we take the chassis, we can bolt this into position. And in theory, at least, that should position this in the right position. Uh, location so that the two ends come together uh, nice and cleanly and uh, they'll be in the right place ready for refitting so assuming that we weld this when it's bolted to the chassis then when we when we come back and bolt it to the chassis again it should all be the right shape and size and everything should line up if we try and weld it like this then chances are what could happen is when we try to uh, flex it or move it to go onto the chassis uh, we could end up breaking it. Uh, probably won't break in the same place, but it might break somewhere else or do some damage. So we want to relieve the stresses in it as much as we can. And the best way to do that is to use the actual thing it's going to be bolted to to uh, position it and, and align it. So we'll get that set up and then it'd be ready for uh, starting to weld. So the two parts are now bolted to the chassis. Luckily there are countersunk holes on the side of the chassis so it pulls everything into line. These bits are kind of sprung slightly apart but I think that's part of the, um, the distortion that was in the casting to start with. And they're now perfectly aligned at the front which is where I want them to be. So I'm not going to try and pull these back exactly to close the gap up as small as it can be. Um, it's only about um, half a millimetre uh, spread anyway and um, that will obviously fill with weld. Um, but it does mean that the chassis and the front part of it will be in a perfect straight line. This is now, I've put a ruler on it, and it's now in a perfect straight line, both on the front and on the underside. So it's now perfectly lined up, which is exactly where I want it to be. So the next thing I have to do is get this onto the welding table and um, I can get the first um, part of the welding done. So I'm going to start on the um, top side of this I'm going to put a small metal block on the underside to try and minimize the risk of blowing through uh, as I said unfortunately I can't really show this but um, all I'm going to do is put a steel block on the underside clamp it in place that will act as a kind of a heat sink and also a support or something blowing through this is very easy to vaporize and once I've done that I put plenty of uh, excess material on here and um, once I've done that I'll flip it over do the same on the other side as we did with the test piece. Then I'll flip it over again, come down the front, and then once that's all done, assuming it goes to plan, I'll get it all ground back, and uh, it should look uh, quite uh, a nice repair. Then hopefully we can get it painted. So that's the first pass. I've gone over, filled in, and blended the um, weld in, so it now spans 
quite a wide area well past each side of the join and um, ground back the uh, rough top layer and what I can now do is go back over it um, fill in, you see it's left it a little bit porous um, so I can now, that's because there's so much crap inside this uh, material what I can now do, because this is mostly filler I can go back over and fill this in with nice clean filler grind it back and I'll get a nice clean finish and uh, then I can paint it and uh, we can move on to the rest of the repair but the whole point is this will now be uh, very, very nice and strong and it's not going to fail again at least not in this position so um, it will be hopefully a permanent fix so here we have the finished item I went back over it um, refilled the uh, porous part of the join so the first pass, because there was so much contamination in this and it's such a porous material, it was erupting and um, causing pits and, and voids, um, but it was welded together. So second pass was a lot easier because the material that was there was of course now uh, good uh, filler material, so it was much easier and it had a lot more thermal mass as well, so the uh, process uh, went a lot more smoothly. And uh, then I could uh, grind it back to the correct profile and uh, because it was attached to the chassis it should be the right shape so I ground it all back uh, as you can see it's come out uh, very nicely it looks the part and uh, of course I've uh, repainted it so I'll just uh, fit this back onto the chassis make sure it still fits and uh, we'll see how it looks So that's how it looks when it's reattached to the chassis. It lines up correctly, then it should do because it was bolted to this when I welded it. And uh, you literally cannot see the join, so it should be stronger than it was originally, at least in the part that was uh, welded. And um, it uh, looks nice, and I can now get on and start reassembling and uh, restoring the rest of the machine. So I think that's a successful repair. Like I said, there's many other ways we could have gone about repairing this, but I think that this method is probably by far the best. It will give, as you can see, a very nice result, pretty much an invisible repair, and it is very strong, so it should be a permanent fix. It's not likely to come apart. And um, if you had bigger uh, material to repair, so if it was like the chassis you were repairing, you wouldn't need to fill it all with filler metal. You could just weld it and you could use something like epoxy or um, body filler to fill in the voids but unfortunately on such a thin um, section as this frame you can't really do that because you need as much material as much uh, bond uh, uh, weld as you can get in there uh, because you can, you're going to grind most of it away and that's one of the downsides of having repairs where both sides are visible you need to uh, of course not uh, modify the profile um, but it's come out fairly well. The upside of this was because it had kind of a weird shape, it made it difficult to weld. But having kind of three different uh, parts to it, it does make it stronger. It's not like a, a, a single flat piece of metal. Um, that You can weld that, as I showed with the fan housing, it will come out fairly strong, but something like this will come out even stronger. So despite being very porous and a difficult uh, repair, this has come out uh, very nicely.